We're continuing through our long chew into Matthew and be reading uh, Matthew 19, and I'll be reading verses 16 through 30. And then we've got a treat of having two lovely ladies coming to speak to us today. And I'll introduce those guys in just a little bit. But here's God's word. So please pay attention. Someone came to Jesus with this question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why do you ask me about doing good? Jesus replied. There's only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, life, keep the commandments. Which ones, the man asked. Jesus replied, you must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. I've obeyed all those commandments, the young man replied. What else must I do? Jesus told him, If you want to be perfect, go on and sell your possessions and give the money to the poor. And you have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. But the young man heard this and went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus then turned to his disciples and said, I tell you the truth. It is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again. Is it easier for the, it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Who can then be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Then Peter said to him, we've given up everything to follow you, Lord. What will we get? And Jesus replied, I assure you that when the world is made new and the Son of Man sits upon his glorious throne, You who have been my followers will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will will inherit eternal life. But many who are the greatest now will be the least important then. And those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. May God bless the reading of his word. Jess, why don't you come on up? I got to know Jess a few years ago as we were small group buddies for a while. And uh, I've grown to appreciate Jessica in so many ways. You are fierce. You love people well. Right now, she's feeding a whole pile of college and career age kids every single Thursday night just to hang out. And I want to thank you for that because you're feeding one of my kids on and off as well. And me too. <laughs> You've got wisdom beyond your age. And it's, old. well, we're, we're both pretty old. We were both talking and trying to figure out how to read notes oh up here. But Jess, you come by this knowledge and this wisdom, not by doing it the easy way and not going through easy times. I've appreciated that you've gone through tough stuff. And it's out of that you're going to share today. So God bless you. Thank you for being willing to speak to us. Let's give her a round of hands. It is terrifying. Go for it. If I didn't let God start to reconstruct my heart and intentionally lean into him, I'm not able to love the way that he intends. I needed to give up my will in order to see God's will for my life. I so much want to be authentic with humility Dr. Rob Reimer wrote this book called The Tenderness of Jesus. It's an invitation to experience the Savior, and he made a comment that stuck with me. It says, authentic humility begins with honesty, and it ends with responsibility, and somewhere in the middle is death to self, to self, and to make it about Jesus. I needed to get real, change my ways, and continue to repent and look to Jesus. During our mission trip to Africa, I was asked to speak to some young women on several occasions. I could elaborate on how insanely nervous this made me, like today. (laughs) But I trusted, somewhat, that it was God's plan, until about two hours needing to do so. We were at the church home base early in the morning in Ashaka. I had time to go sit by myself at the end of the church, um, 
facing the banana field, tree field. It might have been banana trees. I'm not sure to me. That's what it was. They were trees in a field. <laughs> I was sitting in a rickety little white plastic chair. Um, it was still early, and the sky was just this beautiful red, I remember. I was fervently praying, Lord, calm my heart. I started rereading what I had written, and I was doubting that it had any value. And then the thought came to me, Jess, 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 God calls me this because he loves me. This is my story. I was like, huh? What? Because I didn't feel like it was a good story. I realized my story is God's story because he makes all things new. By being obedient and telling the story with the difficult message that was in it, I was speaking God's story. It wasn't about me. It was about Jesus and the grace that he offers us. It was about the freedom that he wanted for those girls that I was de delivering the message to. It was about how much Jesus loves us. I didn't have any right to pull it back. James 4 in the NLT, I don't have a timer up, so I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I'm almost done. James 4, 6 says, and he gives grace generously, as the scriptures say. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. When my heart is shifting towards pride and self-righteous thoughts, I need to remember that it is God that offers grace. It's the only way. I'm still stumbling often, guys. But when I look straight ahead at the one who loves me more than anyone or anything, anything is possible. My hubby and Chloe are here today. I actually got a, hu a hug from my youngest son today, too. He surprised me in the house. He was going hunting. I'm so grateful that God is churning my heart and my hurt heart up. He's churning it up. I want to be more like Jesus. Every day I need to remember that I have to give up God's will for my life. Or sorry, my will for my life to live God's will for my life. Please know that when God stirs and compels correction in you, it's because he loves you. Don't squelch it out and trust him. Know that his will for you is far greater than what your will is for yourself. What do you need to give up? Don't hold it back. He already knows. There's so much freedom once you give it to him. It isn't once. It's daily. And for me, to be honest with you, it's hourly. Thanks for hearing me. So our next speaker is Evie Hackett. And uh, I'm supposed to fill some time in between while uh, we do the mic change. So one of the things that for Eve and I, the last little bit, um, she, she likes, she's a little spicy. For, for those of you who don't know, uh, she, she has this little sense or gleam in her eye when she wants to say something. She knows she probably shouldn't, but does it anyways. So we've been having this back and forth when I do hosting and she does hosting that uh, we, we like to challenge, other, challenge each other to, to do better. And oftentimes it's in the, in the sense that after the service is like, you know what, I could have done better than that. Um, but one of the things that I appreciate most about Eve is that spiciness. It is that willingness to put herself out on the line. And one of the things that I've just appreciated so much about her in the last little while is there is a wisdom and a softening to that spiciness. She still doesn't let it up. She still tells you what she thinks you need to hear, but there's wisdom in that. And that God is speaking in you and through you and I am super stoked about what God's going to say through you today. So, Eve Hackett, come on out here. Thank you, Scott. That was such a sweet introduction. I could have done better, but I appreciate it. <laughs> um, I am super honored and thankful for this opportunity, and I'm super happy that you're all here today. I believe God has given me some awesome things to share. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Eve. I usually host, as Scott was saying, it's a lot less pressure. All you got to do is list off a few announcements and remember to pray before you read the Bible verse, but 
It's okay. I believe God's going to speak something to everyone this morning, including myself. Um, I was born and raised in Cranbrook. I've been going to this church since I was a baby. Could have something to do with Frank and Jody, the lead pastors here, being my parents. But, you know, I take after my dad a lot in the way that we both really struggle to sit down and get things done. So while procrastinating writing this message, I was scrolling through Instagram, as one does. I'm sure you're aware of that. And I came across this post talking about Paul from the Bible. And it talks about how he, how he drinks his coffee and how he prepares it. And I get to the end of the thing, and I was absolutely shocked. But it turns out that he brews it. Oh, you guys didn't like that one. Okay, how about this? How about this? I got my license a week and a half ago. I know, super exciting, by the grace of God. Um, and I've been looking for a car. And I was thinking, hmm, what car should I get? And it hits me, I should get a Chrysler. Oh, didn't like that one either. How about an Accord? No, okay. I guess I also get the foul jokes from my dad. <laughs> I am super fortunate to have been raised in a Christian household, two loving parents growing up in a church. I always knew about God, knew who he was, but I didn't like know, know him. It was kind of a one-way relationship. I need him, I go to him, but it's not a constant thing. Until about two years ago, back in 2022, I went to family camp in Hungry Horse, Montana, where God completely shifted my life. Um, I don't have time to share my full testimony this morning, but if you want to hear it, I am willing. We can go for coffee or something. But I was going into grade 11 at the time and had plans of staying at home, going to the college here, pursuing a career in finance. I was leaning towards accounting, wasn't set on anything. Um, that September, I went to Regina, Saskatchewan for a youth conference at one of our fellow LifeLinks churches. If you don't know what LifeLinks is, it's just an organization of non-denominational churches we're a part of. And it was completely life-changing, like figuratively and literally speaking. God had called me out of my selfishness and control of my future and challenged me to surrender that to him. So that weekend I did so. I came home, I was on the grad list two weeks later, applied to the University of Regina, into the teaching program I might add, and now I'm moving in 33 days. <laughs> yeah, um, Matthew 19 verse 21 says, Jesus told them, if you wanna be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven, then come follow me. If you come up to me and you ask me how I feel about moving, I will tell you how excited I am because I am so stoked, you guys. Um, but I probably won't bring up how it is absolutely terrifying. Like, leaving a community that has poured into me and loved me for years is so difficult. Like, I look out, I'm like, oh, I'm going to miss you guys. Like, oh, it is such a cool thing being raised somewhere where you guys prayed for me and loved me and pushed me towards Jesus when I didn't see that. Um, so thank you guys for that. Thank you for being there when, when I didn't even know it. Um, finances. Oh, my days. You guys probably know this, but the world is so expensive. <laughs> like, I, I made a budget last week, and I was, like, not prepared for those numbers. And so I'm looking at this number that I need before I go, and I'm going, okay, God, I trust you. You're a provider. You've called me. You're going to make a way. And in return, he's like, you're going to tithe more this week. I'm like, what do you mean? You're going to go buy that person dinner. And it's terrifying, but God is stretching my generosity and my trust in him as my provider. And it is so cool. Um, give up your possessions. Give away what God is asking you to. Surrender your plans and then go follow him. You know, Jesus ends that with come follow me because it isn't just about giving up the ways of the world. It's also about choosing the ways of Jesus. This world is not our home. It's pretty much that simple. Verse 29, and everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. When we fully give up our worldly things, desires, habits, we receive a hundred times as much in return because we then receive eternal life. Heaven is our home. And then... Do I believe that God has some really cool things for me, Regina? 100%. And I can't wait to see what those things are. But at the root, at the core, that doesn't matter. The, the calling itself isn't always relevant. It's the step of obedience that is. Because God's going to use you in whatever it is that he calls you to. 
It's just you being obedient. You know, I'm called to be obedient in the same way that you are. Uh, today's passage is about Jesus lovingly confronting, and Peter had a few things to say about that too. So 1 Peter 1.14, so you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. God had confronted me in my selfishness when it came to deciding my future. But for some of you, it could be like what Jess talked about with control. It could be micromanaging situations or avoiding a responsibility God's given you. It could even be like neglecting and not practicing a spiritual gift you've been given. Or, or a really big one that I feel like is kind of touchy is gossip. Proverbs 18, 21, power of life and death is in the tongue. Guys, are we speaking about, are we speaking life about our friends and family? Are we speaking life over our church, over our work, over our leadership, over our government, over our authority? We got to pray about everything that we're saying. Are we speaking words that God would speak over them? The spirit in you is the spirit in them. God loves them and has good plans for them just as much as he has for you. Jude 1, 9, but even Michael, one of the mightiest of angels, did not dare accuse the devil of blasphemy, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. And that took place when Michael was arguing with the devil about Moses' body. Um, but we're all the same. We are all created equally. God is the one who gets to do the judging, not us. Are we loving or are we judging? Because we're supposed to be loving and speaking life over people. When I was praying over this message, I felt like God wanted to lovingly confront at least one person here this morning. Um, I was kind of sensing that you've been called to something, and you either A, oh, I'm too busy for this. It's probably not from God anyways. And you put it to the back of your brain, or you put it on someone else's plate. You're like, this isn't for me. Or you B, you kind of twisted it to fit into your agenda. And that sounds like disobedience to me. Any time that we don't walk something out exactly how God has called us to, we're then choosing our own selfish desires, our own priorities over what God has in store for us. I just feel like you need to go and repent and then ask God how you can restore that calling. A month or so back, I felt called to lay aside one of my best friends at the time. Um, it wasn't a super healthy relationship, mostly for me. She wasn't Christian, and so... I kind of went into the friendship and was like, I'm going to be a light. I'm going to bring her to church. I'm going to introduce her to Jesus. But I would often just get swept into the ways of the world that she was following. So God called me to surrender that, and I did. And I really struggled with it. For about a week, I felt so lonely. And I was like, God, I know she wasn't the best person, but isn't that better than me being lonely? You know? Um, but now I look back, I can't help but see God's plan in it. Two weeks after that, I started talking to one of my Regina people on the daily and that has become something that God has deepened. We push each other towards Jesus. We honor one another. We honor the people around us. And we honor God with our friendship. This, this isn't part of today's message. But if you don't have people who are pushing you to Jesus, go find them. Guys, community is so important with our walk with Christ. If you have someone who is pulling you down instead of pushing you towards God, find new people. Let those people down. Last night, I was struggling with the lies of the enemy, and I called this friend, and we talked, and I explained what was going on, and he had the opportunity to speak life into that. If you don't have people that you're being open with, and they aren't speaking life, find new people, guys. Find community that pushes you towards Jesus. Um, but back to my main point, whenever God asks you to lay something down, it's because he has something so much better for you. Unfortunately, we don't always get to know what that thing is, until we fully surrender the things that we have. We need to take the time to fully lay down every aspect of our life and fully trust God in absolutely everything. You know, I also want to clarify that this morning, I'm not telling you to quit your jobs in hopes God's got a better one. I'm not telling you to move away from Carmack to somewhere better, which in my opinion is the flatlands. Um, no, I'm just, I'm just telling you, be spirit-led in what it is that you surrender. I believe that if you pray and you ask God what you're supposed to give up, he's going to answer you. In fact, I think that maybe some of you walked in here this morning already knowing what that thing is. But you've just been ignoring it and being disobedient. Every single one of us has selfish desires. I get it. I really do. 
There are days where I wake up and I want to disobediently pull from my program and go, surprise, I'm staying. <laughs> because I'm comfortable here. I'm like Cranbrook is what's familiar to me. I look out at this crowd and I see people that ha literally held me when I was a baby who have seen me grow, who know who I am, and I'm comfortable around you guys. And that is a gift, but I'm also called to go. And selfishly, sometimes we have the temptation to run from what God has called us to. But repenting and then resubmitting that thing to him is actually a gift that we get to give God every day. Every morning, give that thing to God. Reiterate that you trust him. You know, thank him for what he's about to do in and through you as a result of you saying, God, not my will, but yours be done. The final verse in Matthew 19 reads, but many who are the greatest now will be least important then. And those who seem the least important now will be the greatest then. Your careers, your possessions, your awards, your successes, your, your, the things that you have, your house, your car, it doesn't matter. When we get to the end of our life, it really doesn't matter, guys. What matters is hearing, well done, good and faithful servant. Our worldly things shouldn't matter because everything that we have is God's. You know, can you imagine what the world would look like if we were all obedient in our calling? Like, we need to get close to Jesus because the closer we get to Jesus, the more juxtaposed we are to him, the more we get to see our faults. And it's, it's this beautiful tension because he gets to help us change and we start to crave that change. We need to get so close to Jesus that we see just how far we are from him because then we can fully know what it is for, that he has for us and we, we wouldn't want to follow our own selfish desires anymore. You know, Jess and I could probably talk about this after studying this verse for like hours, but it doesn't matter because no matter how much we talk, we can't place that in your head and your heart. That's your job. It is it is our responsibility to be obedient and share this morning, but now it's your responsibility to go. It is now your job to go, okay, God, what do I need to give up? And then you need to go, and you need to give that up. And then you need to go, okay, God, what do you have for me? And then you need to go and walk out those steps in obedience. It really is. All it takes is listening to what God is speaking and then moving forward in obedience. That's, that's the recipe to success, guys. That's, that's all it is. I'm going to pray before we go this morning. Father God, I just thank you for the sweet sting of conviction. Um, I thank you that it's not me or Jess or Scott or anyone else speaking this morning, but it's just you through us. So thank you for using us this morning, Father. We just pray that you drop things in people's hearts that now they know what they need to go do. Father, we pray for obedience and follow through as everyone goes through this week. We pray that they would just live according to your call. God, thank you for what you spoke this morning and what you did. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys.